Chapter 1.8, Dividing Rational Numbers. So you should already know how to divide integers. 6 divided by 3 divided by 3 equals 2. Okay? Um, don't forget your rules about signs. Okay? If your signs are the same, like it is here, 6 divided by 3, positive divided by positive, your quotient is positive. Negative 6 divided by negative 3, your answer is still positive 2. If they have the opposite sign, then your quotient will be negative. If one of your two, either your dividend or your divisor is negative, your quotient is also negative. Now I'm going to be using the words dividend, quotient, and divisor a lot. So let's just review. This is your dividend. This is your divisor. And this is your quotient. Okay? This one will be important uh, when we get to fractions. So let's start with example one. Find 2.064 divided by 0.24. So I'm going to skip two lines here. I have 2.064 divided by 0.24. Now, when we divide by a decimal, we never want the, the divisor, which is this number here, to be a decimal. So I'm going to move the decimal two places to the right, or multiply by 100, in this case, to get a whole number of 24. I'm going to do the same thing to my divisor, because whatever I do to one number, I have to do to the other. So I'm going to move that decimal two places to the right, and then I'm going to bring it straight up into my answer. So now I have a number that looks more like 24 into 206.4. Now, you don't have to rewrite the problem. I'm just moving it over so that I don't see the little uh, loops, and it's just going to be a little bit cleaner to solve. You can certainly uh, continue just from your original problem. So 24 does not go into 2, does not go into 20. So how many times does it go into 6 or 206? It goes in 8 times. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 2 is 16, 17, 18, 19. Go to subtract. 4, 20 minus 19 is 1. I'm going to bring down the 4. And 24 goes into 144 6 times. And 6 times 24 is 144. So my final quotient, because this is 0, I don't need to add a zero, bring anything down. I have no remainder, so my final answer is 8.6. Okay, so let's talk about fractions here for a minute. Uh, let's come up here so I have a little more room. So, negative 5 sixths divided by negative 2 thirds. So when you divide fractions, you are actually going to multiply mul by the reciprocal. Okay, going to multiply by the reciprocal. What is that? That's when you take the numerator, in this case negative two-thirds, and the denominator, and you're going to turn them over. So instead, I get negative three-halves. The denominator becomes the numerator, the numerator becomes the denominator, and these are called reciprocals. I only take the reciprocal of the divisor, which is the second number in my problem. This one only. So, negative 5 sixths times negative 3 halves. I'm going to go ahead and cross cancel because while 5 and 2 have no common factors, 3 and 6 do. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by 3 which gives me a 1, 
and a 2. Multiply straight across. Negative 5 times negative 1. Well, that's a positive. 2 times 2 is 4, which equals 1 and 1 fourth. Now, some of you may be thinking, wait a minute, I have two fractions. I divide and I get a number bigger than I started with. Yes, with fractions you actually do. Because this is asking me, how many two-thirds are there in five-sixths? There is one two-thirds and a fourth of another two-thirds. Um, if you want to see that in a bar model, let me know. That'll make a little bit more sense. But from now, we're going to go on to example number two. So how many one and a half ounce servings of cereal are in the larger cereal box at the right? So I see that that cereal box is 19 and a half ounces. So I'm going to take that full 19 and a half ounces and I'm going to divide it into servings of one and a half to find out how many servings there are. So my first step is to turn these into improper fractions. So 19 times 2 is 38, plus 1 is so 39 halves, divided by uh, 2, 3 halves. But I'm dividing fractions, so I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of my divisor. So 39 halves, and here's where we change, times 2 thirds these switch into the reciprocal. Now I can cross cancel. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 3 does go into 13. It goes into 13 or it goes into 39 13 times. 13 times 1 is 13. 1 times 1 is 1. So there are 13 servings in that box. All right, final example. Nope, just kidding. We have more examples today. This is a long one. Example three. Find negative three and five sixths divided by two and a third. Again, step one, change them into improper fractions. Six times three is 18. 18 plus five is 23. So negative 23 sixths divided by 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7, 7 thirds. Now, be careful. Do not drop your sign. Since this is negative, your next, uh, your improper fraction should also be negative. A common mistake is to ignore the negative sign. Please make sure you don't do that, okay? All right, negative 23 sixths will actually be multiplied times the reciprocal. So times 3 sevenths, well 23 and 7 have no common factors, but 6 and 3 do. Divide both of those by 3, and we come up with negative 23 times 1, which is negative 23, over 2 times 7, which is 14. Uh, 14 goes into 23 twice, which is 20, oh no it does not. I'm thinking seven. Let's actually just come do the math. That will save us a lot of work. So 23 divided by 14. That actually only goes in once. Because 13 minus four is nine. So we have negative one and nine fourteenths. It's still negative because I have one negative and one positive in my problem. And a negative divided by a positive is still a negative. All right, now example four. Denise takes her father's old bicycle to a shop to be restored. The shop owner charges Denise $205.20 for the work on the bicycle. The owner wants Denise to pay the bill in full in four and a half months. So what amount does Denise need to pay each month to settle the bill, and what will her payments be? So, we have $205.20 times 
$205.20. Now, this is a debt. So this money is negative. It's an amount that Denise owes, and a debt is always negative. Money that you have to pay is always negative. And that is going to be paid in four and a half months. So I'm for ease of writing, I'm going to drop the dollar sign for right now, knowing that I have to bring that dollar sign back in in my answer. So negative 205.20 divided by 8 9 halves. So I'm going to turn this into a fraction also. Two oh five point two zero over one times the reciprocal of two ninths. Multiply straight across two oh five point two times two is four ten forty divided by nine. equals 45.60. Now, I actually made a mistake. I dropped this negative sign. So I need to come back. It's a negative 205 times positive 2. It's negative. It is negative $45.60 per month. The other way to do that would be to change negative 205.2 divided by 4.5. Okay, turn the four and a half into a fract into a decimal instead. Negative 205.20 divided by 4.5. Move the decimal one place to the right so that you have a whole number. Move the decimal one place to the right and move it up. So now 45 goes into 205 uh, four times. Four times five is 20. Four times four is 16, 17, 18. Five, 20 minus 18 is two. Bring down the two goes in five times, five times five is 25, four times five is 20 plus one is 22, subtract, 12 minus five is seven, four minus two is two, bring down the zero, 45 goes into 276 times, six times five is 30, 4 times 6 is 24, 25, 26, 27. Okay, now it's money and it's negative, so it has to have 2. So there is your monthly payment. All right? So she will make 4 months of... $45.60. However, she has that half payment. So I need to take this $45.60 and divide it by 2. Divide it in half to get that half payment. So $45.60 divided by 2 is a half month of $22.80. So her full payments will be $45.60, but that last little half payment will be only $22.80. All right. That's it for examples today. There are a lot, so complete, please complete your quick checks and CYUs and see me if you have any questions.